So pick up where I got left out last time. Uh, we have uh, some other profitability ratios. One is return on assets and one is return on equity. And uh, you, the both ratios use uh, net income as the numerator. Uh, return on assets use uh, total assets as denominator and uh, return on equity basically you scale total equity. The difference uh, is not much uh, except the denominator. Well, the thing is you should know that as a shareholder of the company, your investment is within the total equity, okay? The total assets include the total equity. It also includes the total liabilities or the money the firm borrows, okay? So as an investor uh, in the firm's stocks or as an owner of the firm, you should care more about uh, earning on equity than re return on assets just because your money is in the equity part, okay? And the total assets just include something else. All right. The next thing I want to mention here is uh, how do we uh, construct the return on equity based on DuPont identity method, okay? So let me just uh, write this on the board. Uh, return on equity, it basically is a net income divided by total equity, all right? So in the framework of a DuPont identity, I'm going to uh, uh, put uh, these things, sales, over sales, okay, that's basically one, and then times total assets over total assets is another uh, one, okay? So basically it does not change the number at all. Uh, and then I rearrange the whole thing, then net income divided by sales, that gives you um, the uh, profit margin, and then the sales divided by total assets, that gives you the assets turnover ratio, and then total assets divided by total equity, that gives you the equity multiplier, okay? And the profit margin, uh, this uh, gives you an idea of the firm's profitability, and you hope this is a positive, okay? And the, the total assets turnover ratio gives a, a sense of a efficiency, how effectively the managers utilize the firm's uh, resource to generate the wealth, okay? And this is the debt ratio, basically. Okay, it's a financial leverage. So as I mentioned earlier, if uh, the debt ratio goes up, if the firm has more uh, debt obligations on its shoulder, then this ratio, this equity multiplier ratio would increase. Okay, and this comes to the definition of a leverage in the financial world. So basically, if you have a positive uh, uh, profit margin and you have a positive uh, uh, assets turnover ratio, when this uh, leverage ratio increase, we have more debt, and then your return on equity would increase. Okay, that's the whole idea of it. And that's exactly what happened in the 2008 financial crisis. So what happens in those uh, financial industry, uh, in those financial uh, companies was, uh, uh, there was nothing they can do to improve uh, the net profit margin, and there's nothing they can do. Okay, I'm talking about the managers or the owners. There's nothing they can do to promote the efficiency, but what they can do is to increase the liabilities, okay? They just keep borrowing money and uh, on and on. Just like Lehman Brothers, when it broke down, it has a debt ratio of 90%. Fannie Mae, Freddie Mac, even this uh, US government sponsored firm has a, a um, debt ratio of uh, 95%, okay? That's uh, utterly insane, okay? So, uh, when this net income becomes negative, okay, when this net income becomes negative, then also the, the effect, okay, this negative effect would be amplified by large uh, debt ratio, okay, by large equity multiplier. So if you have a negative one net profit margin just because you borrow more money, this could be amplified as negative five at negative 10, and that is more damage to the shareholder's wealth. So that's exactly what happened in 2008 financial crisis. Okay, so the duration is here in this slide. I do not repeat that. So just to show you on this board how it, it, it is derived. Okay, and in the Excel project number one, you're gonna do the same thing. You're gonna construct net profit margin um, and uh, uh, assets turnover ratio and equity multiplier one by one and uh, get the product of the three to get a return on equity. All right. Then the next ratio, next group of ratios is a market value ratios, and that concerns the stock price in the uh, public traded market, okay? So now 
we have another system that is called a market system. Previously, we were working on the book value system, okay? So you have a book value and you have the market value, okay? The book value basically is from the financial statements, okay? It's from the financial statements. Um, so let's say your total equity is uh, one item on the financial statements is on basically a balance sheet and you get that number every quarter it got updated every quarter every year which is not very frequent okay so you use the total equity divided by number of shares you would get a, a book value per share okay book value per share so that's the stock that's the stock worth um, on the financial statements or on book okay the market value, however, is uh, it's just the stock price, okay? And the stock price could be determined by a lot of things, primarily by the profitability of the firm. But remember, there's also buyer and the sellers of a stock in the market, okay? Just like Apple just got a 30% decline on its uh, stock prices, okay? So, uh, and the stock price is uh, keep changing all the time. So how often does the stock price change, okay? How often does stock price change? It is uh, it is uh, every two hundred nanosecond. Okay, every two hundred nanosecond. So basically, you have one second, you have a thousand seconds, or a one thousandth of a second, or one millionth of a second, and one nanosecond is uh, one billionth of a second. Okay, and you have two hundred of that. So basically, that's less than a, a millionth of a second. So right now. Uh, most of the financial institutions are doing high frequency trading so that's how fast they trade stock okay so that's how fast the stock price got updated okay just because there are buyers and sellers they keep giving selling orders and buying orders and that makes the stock price keep um, changing up and down uh, so that's how the market goes okay so the book value is uh, basically determined by the um, total assets okay so for each one dollar of assets there is one dollar of equity uh, that's for sure okay or one dollar of uh, liabilities okay so if you have a hundred million equity value so you should uh, find a hundred million worth of assets like buildings equipment so, and uh, um, machines all right and the, the prices however are determined by the profitability okay or the cash flow okay cash flows generated by the firm the profit so the higher the profit the firm makes, then the firm's stock is more desirable by the shareholders, then the, pro the price would go up. So we're talking about two different pricing systems, book value and market value, okay? And for the market capitalization, okay, or the market value or market cap, it equals to the stock price per share, okay, times number of shares outstanding, okay? Number of shares, sorry, number of shares. Okay, that's the total market value. And uh, for the total book value, it's just the uh, common, just the common equity. Okay, it's just the common equity. Um, and if you use a common equity divided by the number of shares, you will get a book value per share. And then if you use the net income divided by the shares outstanding, okay, then you would get uh, uh, earnings per share. That's what you're learning in accounting class. So that's also a counting term. The P ratio is a really a finance term. So you use a stock price divided by earning per share. As I said, stock price keep changing all the time. Well, earning per share is only updated every quarter. Okay. And then you have a, a very important uh, uh, ratio that is called a market to book ratio. The market to book ratio could be at per stock level, okay, per share level. Use a stock price, which is market to value per share, divided by book value per share, okay to get the market to book ratio or uh, it can be expressed at the firm level so use uh, stock price times the total shares outstanding to get a market cap okay or market value which is right up there and then total equity is the book value at the firm level so that's another way to get a market to book ratio all right and for uh, the united states the market to book ratio uh, is uh, usually from 1.5 um, to um, 2.5 for the healthy growing firms if you have market book ratio that is lower than one then that is not a very good sign for the firm to operate all right
And uh, talking about the PE ratio, also there is a certain range for the firm's PE ratio to vary, okay? So let's say the PE ratio uh, should be around a 20 to 30 range, okay? So the price is uh, 20 times or 30 times of the earning per share, depending on the industry. And what about if you have a, a company with a PE ratio equals to uh, 50? Well, that's a very high PE ratio. So the PE ratio, if it is equals to a 50, what does that mean? That means the price is so high, whereas the earnings is so low. Okay, so in that case, this stock price, this, this stock is overpriced. What would you do with that stock if you have it? You would sell it, right? You think the price is too high, you better utilize the high price and you sell it. And if you keep selling it, then the price would jump. So this PE ratio will eventually converge back to the normal range. Does that make sense? Okay, and what about if you have another firm with a PE ratio equals to two? Okay, that's a super, super low PE ratio when they have a lot of earnings, but the price is not too high. Okay, so what do people do in the market uh, with this stock? They would keep buying the stock, okay, just because the price is low, they don't have to pay a lot, but they can still make a lot of money for them. The company can make a lot of money for the investors, okay, then they just keep buying it. As a result, the price would go up. Okay, so from this uh, super low uh, number back to the normal range. So if you have a company either with a high PE ratio or low PE ratio, the results as a market correcting itself will get back to the normal range from 20 to 30. Okay, here is one um, exercise. So two companies have the same P uh, have the same earning per share ratio, and one company has a higher price. Uh, so definitely, you know that company should have a higher PE ratio. So you should uh, uh, select a D, okay, you should select a D. And uh, the given context just doesn't provide enough information to make all the other judgments, like a risk level, like a market to book ratio, like lower dividends. So lower dividends is completely uh, off the topic because it does not mention anything about uh, how firm pay out the dividends out of its net income. And uh, the risk level is really expressed by uh, the size of the firm or the market to book ratio. Okay, talking about the market book ratio in option two, uh, you do not have the common equity or the any information about uh, the book value of the firm, so you cannot reach that conclusion.